we've had some capacity issues relative to uh, people being people wanting and seeking tests but not being able to receive them. The good news is the the 11 tests that came back as part of this afternoon's batch all uh, were negative, so we're up to 111 tests, only one of those being positive, and that was the individual, uh, the male, 63-year-old male from Ward County who had traveler contact with someone who had confirmed positive. So we're still uh, in a position where uh, people in North Dakota should understand uh, that the risk remains low uh, and that the, the, the nature and character of this virus, while there's still much to unknown, uh, we still are in a position where we recognize uh, that it has uh, has had uh, creates more of a risk uh, for people that are elderly or have chronic underlying uh, health decisions. So then that leads us to the decision of of why would you why would you think about closing schools and why would other states close schools if there is not uh, health risks to children. Uh, the reason has to do with the math uh, of a contagion. Uh, we believe that this uh, coronavirus uh, has, uh, for every person that gets it, uh, because of the high infection and the infectious nature of it, that two or more people would be infected for every person that might get it. Well, this creates a situation uh, where, again, we've talked about math at some of the past meetings, but there's some math involved in this because when we use, sometimes people use the word exponentially, uh, but they're not using it in an actual strict math case. But in this case is, if we were to have a doubling in the state of North Dakota, it's great that we've got only one confirmed case with the lack of testing, we can presume that we've got more cases in our state than what we are aware of. We don't know how many, but whatever that number might be, uh, let's say it's, let's say instead of one case, there's two cases. Well, two cases, if each of those two people infect two other people, uh, then suddenly, you know, two becomes uh, four becomes eight, becomes 16, becomes 32, becomes 64, becomes 128, becomes 256, becomes 512, uh, becomes 1,024. This is what exponential means. And it, if we have that kind of a rapid increase or spread, then that's where we run into the issue of overwhelming uh, our health community. And one of the primary treatments for coronavirus for someone that might have a uh, severe case uh, or if they had an underlying re respiratory disease uh, is they need access to care, uh, including access to ventilators. And one of the things that you say, what's the new information from last Friday uh, is that we've been working over the weekend uh, to try to really understand how many ventilators we have in the state of North Dakota, how many are available, how many are working, uh, what the clean cycles are to get them back in operation after they've been exposed to the virus and how many more could we get. But we also know that there's a global worldwide demand uh, which could be leading to a shortage of ventilators, so there could be supply chain issues. So again, the fact that this is a global pandemic and not a local one, uh, if it was local, then you would say, hey, if we're short, we'll just send them in from other cities. Well, we'll send them in from other countries. But in fact, it's because if there may be a global shortage of the thing you need to help care for people that are elderly, uh, that creates an additional potential crimp on our on our healthcare system here in North Dakota. And so therefore we've talked, you know, from a math standpoint about flattening the curve instead of having a, a peak of infections that goes up rapidly and comes down, that how do you how do you delay that and spread that over time? And the way you delay that and spread that over time is with social distancing. Uh, is that we have people have less contact uh, with with other people, and therefore it slows the spread. And one of the places where we know that, uh, so then this causes us to examine, uh, as the nation has, whether it's professional sporting events or college sporting events, high school sporting events, large gatherings, uh, for the most part are all being shut down. But then there's the actual living and working that we do with uh, going to school and going to work every day. What are the next steps there? Well, we know that we can't eliminate that completely, but we would say, uh, until we get more data, we should try to take the prudent steps, the conservative steps to try to figure out a way to reduce that. So one of the places where we have over 110,000 students that gather uh, daily is in our K-12 system across the state. Uh, we know that this creates a burden for families and for workforce uh, if we were to close those schools. Uh, but we're making a uh, recommendation tonight uh, that statewide uh, we close the K-12 schools for one week. That is in five days. And why would you say five days? What's going to be different in five days? Well, there's two things that we hope to have uh, 
that would develop over this week. One is we hope to have better data, uh, meaning that we hope that there'll be more widespread availability of testing that goes on so we can have a better uh, understanding of the, of the, of the spread, uh, and that'll help us figure out where we might place on the, the three thresholds that we announced or where we might be relative to the four levels for decision-making. The second thing that we know is that well, many organizations have done disaster planning, uh, and some organizations have even done pandemic planning, uh, including the state of North Dakota. Uh, when now, when when we're in the situation uh, where we're in a, a real situation, and we've got an understanding of of how this is occurring over the over the globe, uh, we've got an opportunity here to improve and refine and make those plans uh, better and stronger. And those plans, uh, you know, as far as potentially reopening schools, because if if you're saying if kids are healthy uh, and kids have little impact from this, uh, could kids be going to school again this spring? They potentially could. Uh, but could that include uh, if we had had the ability to check kids' temperatures when they're coming into school to make sure that only healthy kids were coming in? Those are the kinds of things that we'd like a week to plan. So in addition to closing the schools for the week, we're asking uh, that all uh, essential personnel uh, from administration and leadership that would be working on those school plans report to work uh, on Monday and Tuesday of this week. If they need more time, they can do that. Of course, they can figure out a way to work from home or do teleconferencing or figure out how they have to do it. But we want to see that all 175 school districts in the state develop plans uh, for when we have better data than how we would go through a process of reopening uh, our schools. Uh, <clears throat> As you know, uh, you know this has been a rapidly evolving situation, and and again, uh, since Friday, the new information that has come through, some of that uh, includes. Uh, new guidance from the CDC uh, and their most recent guidance, which just came out this afternoon, was more restrictive uh, and it talked about large events and math gathering. These would be weddings, parades, concerts, and events. Uh, there's a definition of what a mass gathering or large event is, but they're now recommending that mass gatherings and large events have no more than 50 people. And the reason why they're specifying uh, mass gatherings and large events is because that's where somebody new might come into a community. If you have an existing set of folks that you know, like your own family members or others that you work with regularly uh, that are healthy or they're practicing good hygiene, uh, they're staying home when they're sick, uh, again, the risk remains low. But what we're trying to do is uh, stop the spread of the disease at the pace at which it spreads, uh, there's it's not it's not it's, it's not possible to prevent it entirely, but we're just trying to slow down uh, the spread. Uh, in terms of uh, what local school leaders uh, and the questions that might, they might have, uh, we're setting up a call for 8.15 p.m. tonight, so half an hour from now. Uh, the superintendent, Basler and I will be holding uh, a dial-in conference with all of the superintendents across the state. I know that they'll have uh, questions, uh, many questions, because uh, there are questions around school nutrition. There's questions around uh, special education that will all need to be addressed in terms of the responsibilities that schools deliver. Uh, and we'll look forward to starting those discussions at 8.15 uh, and then moving forward from there. But again, uh, again, our, we are uh, uh, <clears throat> by executive order ordering the closing of K-12 schools, both public and non-public, through Friday, March 20th. We will revisit this at the end of the week uh, based on better data and better plans uh, at that point in time to decide where we go next. Uh, and so...